when we talk of the modi model whatever governance model i think you would appreciate this is a model which has sustained itself for the last 20 22 years and promises to sustain in future those who have ruled the roost over the years will not like india to be on the ascent and that to that fast we are 24 into 7 into 365 party we are ready for any election any time i don't think national conference going with the congress party uh, for a yatra means that they have struck a chord and if it is so then the congress party has to explain whether it uh, is in favor of 370 or against it so i think the the kashmiri pandit community also believe that their fortunes are not more secure with any other dispensation other than one led by bjp so of course if if they are sometimes feeling little aggrieved they would obviously complain to us and they complain to us because they have expectation from us hmm. they don't complain to others because they have already tried them on the park occupied jammu kashmir and see the comparison there they are actually vying struggling yearning praying wishing that they should be, be made a part of india once a doctor is always right i have been a teacher of medicine for almost 25 years yeah. before i uh, put in my papers because the party asked me to take up an assignment everybody thought i have gone off my head i was practicing till 25th of may 2014 the oh. day before i was sworn in i'll go back any moment when <laughs> i am not needed here Namaste Jai Hind welcome to another edition of ANI podcast with Smita Prakash today i converse with dr jitendra singh who's a medical doctor by training but decided to join politics he fought an election from udhampur and jammu and kashmir in 2014 won that election defeating political stalwart gulam nabi azad and then again in 2019 got reelected he's held many portfolios in pm modi's cabinet and currently he's minister of state independent charge for the ministry of science and technology and minister of state independent charge ministry of earth science and minister of state for prime minister's office personnel public grievance and pensions department of atomic energy and department of space Dr. Jitendra Singh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, we need to tell our viewers that we are recording this on the eighth of February, and uh, the Prime Minister is about to speak in a short while from now. So we have asked you to come when the Parliament session is on, and of course, the entire controversy over uh, crony capitalism and about what Rahul Gandhi has said in Parliament yesterday, which is seventh of February. Uh, he said all this about uh, you know accusing the. the bjp government uh, on crony capitalism and yesterday at least on the 7th of february it seemed like the bjp was on a back foot and not able to uh, defend itself very well no no certainly not quite contrary to that the all the allegations or insinuations uh, sought to be made by the congress and the other leaders from the opposition are quite unsubstantiated and uh, i think everybody realizes that even on the floor of the house uh, when uh, the leader of opposition was speaking in the rajya sabha today the chairman repeatedly insisted that he should authenticate the uh, information that he was trying to put across which he did not so they have got used to getting away by making unsubstantiated allegations whereas on the other hand bjp has very effectively put across uh, quite a few points to prove that uh, to 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 prove that what they say doesn't carry substance in the sense that uh, taking the instance of this business house that you are referring to they were already dealing with number of congress led governments and even in the earlier governments it's not that uh, some something that the bjp has discovered it only this government discovered it after 2014 they have already been there and uh, very actively engaged with the earlier governments and also some of the present governments in, in some of the states led by the congress party a b the the kind of uh, charges that uh, the congress party is 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 uh, trying hard to make at the bjp led, led government are are the ones which are uh, which already stand proven against them during the 10 years of the uh, upa rule whether it was uh, 2g 3g commonwealth whatever so i think uh, they are just trying to uh, equalize in a vain attempt seeing that the election is drawing closer next year 
but i don't think this carries any weight and uh, the, the it is doesn't carry any conviction with the common people um what you're saying is that the adani uh, group has been there even before <laughs> 2014 that but that the congress is not uh, disputing that the Cong- that the adani group is doing business no, no, in even, congress no no even even if you if you want to put it this way that they have the, the, they are saying that after 2014 there's certain increase in the fortunes yeah then i think uh, why should we ignore that the fortunes if at all have increased have been contributed even by the congress led states hmm. rajasthan and uh, chatisgarh they have been equally dealing with adanis and you have abundant not equally uh, but yes they they have no, been I, there see because that is because their space is limited hmm. but it's not something that they have found untouchable if it was so unholy dealing with this group then why would they be dealing hmm. it's just that their scope of dealing may have been limited so that's but a different story what uh, what the opposition is saying is and uh, even in the market people talk this i'm talking about the stock market and all that for a long long time it was it's as if the adani bonds were sovereign bonds so when foreign investors were also investing it was like okay there's no way this company will sink whether amalia sinks or whether anybody else sinks this has the it is under the chhatra chaya of the modi government there's a protection to the adani stock so it's like a sovereign bond so in may invest kar sakte hain no a i would not uh, subscribe to this uh, 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 this opinion that there is under chhatra chaya because the modi government has been equal to all and fair to everybody but yes the trust of the people is won by the record of any given company and if they commanded certain amount of trust that also the credit goes to them so i think all the more reason that we should uh, trust their uh, their rise of fortunes hmm. the heidenberg report came in uh, it's now almost what a couple of weeks since it's been there it's <coughs> made so much of noise in parliament also the prime minister is going to speak in a few hours from now but somehow the the defense by the government seems to be muted it's as if the the bjp and the bjp government the party as well as the government is aware that the closeness that the adani group has with the bjp and the stupendous rise of this group uh is something that it is embarrassed no, about absolutely that not. is the perception absolutely not this is a perception which possibly has also affected you but having said that the maybe bjp is a party both as in the, in the, in the in the cadre as well as in the government follows a certain amount of discipline and doesn't uh, start making noises without substance to which maybe a congress party or tmc are known for and therefore it it looks like that but the common people are very certain even if you uh, take the opinion of the stock market uh, commentators they are of the firm view that this is just a passing phase mm. and uh, they do not subscribe to the kind of perception that you are referring to yeah i get that that you what you're saying is that whenever something like this happens everybody sees the stock market as an indicator about confidence in a particular industrial group or if there is no confidence nobody will put in the money but you can't deny that there seems to be some kind of a nervousness which is why you saw flight of capital also to some extent now perception is important uh, the the congress government if you remember before 2014 uh, the prime minister himself at that stage said that the perception of crony capitalism was was something that they could do nothing about no i think on the came. on the contrary it is the this government which has cleared all the air as far as the crony capitalism is concerned so it's not that easy to hmm. uh, paint it with the same brush yes uh, because uh, there is a lot uh, that the the B, that the bjp party and the government has been talking about the antyoday that this is a this is a party and a government which will work at the state and at uh, center towards uh, providing for the last man or the last woman at in the row so the entire build up has been ke hum gareebon ki sarkar hain but allegations of crony capitalism can damage that no but uh, no? Where, where is the allegation it's only allegation from the hmm. from some some quarters in the media and uh, and some western interest to whom it suits otherwise on the contrary if you go by the record of the 8 years I think the performance of uh, this government in the last eight years far surpasses that of the earlier seven decades. Uh, whether you take it development wise, whether you take it governance wise, whether you take, as you said, reaching out to the uh, last mile, and um, even if you take the figures, 
I mean, this is tremendous, and new areas have been opened up, which were hitherto closed. Like for example, space. Now we are ahead of uh, or virtually every other country in the world, yes. and we started off our space journey 75 years ago when uh, America was on and the Soviet Union were on the verge of landing on the surface of Moon, and look here we are today. We are launching their satellites mm. uh, and and earning revenue out of it. which was something which was unimaginable and now i think a good analyst like you would somebody ponder to think why this couldn't have happened 75 70 years ago or 60 years ago we have the pictures of sara bhai carrying a launcher on the on the carriage of his bicycle is no longer so there is so much of a steam to the kind of our global innovation index we have jumped 40 places from 81 to 41 this is not a small remark i mean all these are reflections of our economy to which of course the business houses are also a part of right whether you the one you name or the others global innovation running 40 we our economy is now number 5 we have taken over uk is that not a matter of pride for any common citizen of india that we have taken over a country which ruled over us for two decades two centuries hmm. we are now ahead of them our startup ecosystem standing number 3 in the world and where were we before 2014 we just had about 350 start- startups in india today it is almost 90000 we have more than 100 unicorns and you know our startups are now looked up to both domestically abroad so i think there is a whole lot of uh, parameters which indicate otherwise I'm and if you come... talk of antode and other things hmm. i think one other unspoken fact not often discussed is which is quite in contrast with the earlier comments is that the entire Uh, work culture has changed which has also changed the narrative the narrative built by this government in the last 8 years is so strong so strong that a 3 days of gossip about all these things cannot you know uh, falsify it if you talk of antar the the gas cylinders have reached almost uh, 11 crore households and when i see the change of culture which has created a strong narrative is that the list were prepared of the needy families nobody asks where did you come from what was your religion you hindu or muslim or a brahmin or a thakur they didn't even ask whether you had voted for bjp in the last election they didn't even insist that you vote for bjp in the next election so in the entire discourse and the entire culture has undergone a change about 10000 uh, or uh, almost equal number if it was 10 crore uh, hmm. gas cylinders about 11 to 12 crore of uh, toilets built toilet built in every household which required and the prime minister speaking about it from the rampers of red fort so the work culture the work uh, style and also the political culture has entirely undergone a change it's not it's not looking it's not vote centric or voter centric it's rather citizen centric and that that itself is what gives a tremendous amount of trust in prime minister modi it's not easy to not to not to believe what he says mm-hmm. now if he says you clap for covid you start clapping even you did <laughs> if you ask to light a diya you do that if you are asked to stay home and observe a, a home a civil uh, lockdown Distant, you do yeah. that that's because he has over the years with the kind of sincerity commitment earned that kind of trust which can't be easily so you are uh, uh, you've listed out uh, some of the schemes uh, which when you go in for elections in the state elections we saw this happening uh, last year all the state elections you were talking about this and um, and in the in the 2019 elections also uh, when the rafal con- thing started with the congress he uh, rahul gandhi put that as the lead motive you know he went to the thing that yahan pe corruption hai and because of that the uh, the bjp is going to lose it didn't work when the state elections happened last year one saw that the whole labharthi voters the ones who benefited from the schemes which you just talked about they are the ones who voted for you now it seems that of going in into uh, the state elections this year nine states going into polls the the congress is going to make this the which is crony capitalism as their lead motive how do you see this n- state elections see, moving uh, a you cannot uh I have, I have nobody to decide what will be the Congress manifesto. B, they have been onto it as you yourself said. They used Rafael, and where did they end up? Only the other day, Prime Minister was there in Bangalore. Hmm. In H A L, yes. So you, I think the vindication is so abundant; it hardly needs to be. And and the 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 
matter is also settled with enough evidence to disprove what yeah, the Congress or Rahul Gandhi is saying. Huh. So I think we don't know. That's precisely what so I'm saying. So it didn't work. So, so it, huh. it will not work. It will not work because people trust Modi. People trust the 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 sincerity commitment with this with which the government led by Prime Minister Modi has worked. So they are not going to be taken up by these manufactured lies. These are manufactured perceptions which don't work any longer. It might have worked 20 years ago because sometimes I feel that the Congress party is still playing the the, the tricks of the last election while the voter has moved on. Hmm. Voter is no longer taken in by, the, by, by all this uh, rhetoric which might have worked for them when Mrs. Gandhi said, Gribi hatao. And then uh, at one time they said, Ham do hamare do. So all these things don't work now. So tricks you have to, and you gossip have to walk is what the talk. Saying. You have to walk hmm. the talk. Hmm. And Prime Minister Modi has walked the talk. And he's walked the talk so uh, evidently, abundantly that uh, people uh, have seen it happening. And therefore, uh, I, I think uh, because the ultimate objective of uh, Modi's uh, work culture is to bring ease of living uh, to every section of society. And to raise them to the same level. So I think that is what uh, gives him the kind of uh, sustenance. You know, here is when we talk of uh, Modi model or whatever governance model, I think you would appreciate this is a model which has sustained itself for the last 20, 22 years and promises to sustain in future. Also. So this You're is talking a, Gujarat and now. Yeah, so this is a sustainable model. Hmm. We talk of sustainable goals these days, right from you and so this is here is a sustainable model of governance which defies the principle of diminishing returns. Mm. Any government, whichever it be, after one term, two terms, the, the graph starts coming down. Here is going up. It's going up not because of any rhetoric. It's going up because the hard uh, uh, work done, which translated into real good for the benefit of the common man in this country, and and. Now, talking of the elections, as you said, uh, these two, three states, do you think it will work in Northeast, for example? We have three states going to the polls. Yeah, Nagaland, Nagaland Manipur, Manipur Meghalaya, Meghalaya Tripura, and Nagaland. Nagaland. You have to see to believe the miraculous transformation which has happened in Northeast. Because I've been You've been there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been there for over seven years or so. That was one of the assignments you know, given you to you. You see, when we went into uh, mm -hmm. Northeast in 2014, when this government came in, there were at least three states in the in the region which had never seen a train. You know, for example, Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh. So that reminded me of my village where, you know, people would, uh, they would, uh, they would pass away uh, without having seen a motor car. Because just a bus came from the city. And the train was, of course, unheard of. So, so because of the terrain has been Yes, that? train. Huh. No, not only tra ter terrain. Terrain, of course, was, terrain huh. of course, is is there. But terrain is the same now also. Hmm. Terrain, the, the natural terrain, the geographical terrain has not changed after 2014. God did not come down to change the geographical <laughs> profile of hmm. North East. The kind of prioritization. And you know why? Hmm. Because the earlier governments followed a policy of vote centricity. Prime Minister Modi did not. He can you imagine he has visited Northeast even in his first term as many as fifty-five times, mm. fifty-five times to win the confidence of people to make them realize that to him they are as important as people in any other state of the country. And I think that fifty-five times must be more than the number of times all the preceding prime ministers together would have visited uh, Northeast. Uh, now we have train. I I uh, refer to Arunachal. Today we have Arunachal Express. Uh, running from Itanagar to Delhi. We have every state capital with an airport. Earlier we didn't have, Sikkim didn't have an airport, one of the most uh, favored tourist destinations, still not connected uh, through air. Similarly, Shillong, mm. being the capital of the erstwhile state of Assam, did not have a proper airport. Mm. When you landed in Guwahati and tourists wanted to go to Meghalaya, the commonest demand in 2014 was that they should increase, there should be an increase in the number of commercial helicopter flights for them. Now it's the other way around. The helicopter is available, people prefer going by road. You know, it's such a beautiful, picturesque journey. So this miraculous transformation has, has, has been possible because of extreme prioritization coupled with a lot of hard work which is undergone. So, Not only was he travelling, yeah. he was also insisting every minister should go there. Now, I'll tell you one example. When I was referring to the change of culture, which has actually struck the card with the common people in this country. I think about five years back, Israel came up with an offer that they have a, a specialized area of uh, food-centric parks. Now, we have food parks over here. They, 
they are now coming up with you know they were of course now india also but they were the first to come with specialized food parks like for example citric fruit park mango fruit park so they said they have the uh, technology to set up a citric uh, uh, center of excellence mm. mr cameron was the ambassador over here so i asked him where best it could happen he said mizoram and this government did not take a minute for the last 5 years we have center of excellence in citric fruits in uh, mizoram now mizoram is a is a state which mm. returns one mp to lok sabha just one mp and the and the government is different party mm. uh, bjp doesn't have much of stake from that point of view in spite of that in spite of that so wherever what was required and was justified was done i mean this is quite unlike the culture which was being followed by the other earlier governments because they would not have looked the other way around they no stake you know in a in a place uh, with just about no stake you mean electorally, electorally no stake electorally yeah. so, so this government has this government yeah. has actually or modi i would say has actually changed that uh, culture or sought to move in the direction which is different from the earlier hmm. uh, culture and that is what gives the kind of trust uh, and belief in the minds of the people which does not allow these manufactured perceptions to take root so uh, mainstreaming of northeast india now there are eight states mainstreaming of these yes you see i the other day only uh, day for yesterday i was in meghalaya Ji. and i was telling them hmm. that modi has transformed this region from a terror tag to a development model the development model of northeast is being cited all over the country now hmm. whereas in 2014 when we would travel into by road in the highway there there would be gunshots from the hill tops you know the terrorists and the militants trying to make their presence felt hmm. they look here we are allowing the, you to you are we are giving you a safe passage but uh, don't ever think that we are not there is no longer like that now manipur we used to have uh, road blockades for yeah. four months five months Yours shortage of baby food shortage of yeah. uh, eatables i i'm i'm sure the present generation would not be able to recall also what was the scene like that yes since we were talking about uh, militancy and blockades and all that of course i'm going to come to your home state uh, union territory now kya bolu i don't know what to call it now uh, hopefully status won't change so soon but then uh, everybody in jammu and kashmir seems to be uh, wondering when is statehood coming back so could you t- give us a little bit about the frame no, i don't think i would be elaborating much on that because the home minister Mr. Amit Shah has already retreated more than once on the floor of the house, mm. in the parliament, also outside. That uh, the, it would be reverted back to the state at an appropriate time. So I think it will not be appropriate for me to add to what right. he's already been said by yeah, especially because the parliament is on right now. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I also want to ask you that you know elections, however flawed, have been held, uh, even if there wasn't enough representation that one would like uh, elections to have. Uh, in two thousand and eight, they were held in two thousand and no 2002 8 and 14 if i'm not mistaken when are they going to be held because what the election commissioner is saying seeing the security and things like that no i think again again this question is also uh, a region of the mindset which has uh, got used to working in the congress led governments for over half a century because we do not control the election commission of india so you won't have been asking me of course i would because, because elections no, election i get it election, election commission of india is an independent body and they are free to decide depending on the various inputs certainly the I input can, has to come in about security from the government no, only no, no? but this is again the election commission of india has the last word this mm. is supposed to be and we this government does not interfere in the working of election commission of the limitation is over so the, which means no, any time this year i think the chief election commissioner would be the right person to be asked this question i can we ask only as far as my party is concerned as a bjp as a bjp karyakarta i can say we are 24 into 7 into 365 party we are ready for any election any time be it the local body the panchayat the zila parishad the state assembly the lok sabha and anywhere hmm. you you would have seen us we are always in that mode you are always that, in an election mode no no it's not that we follow a work culture which hmm. includes Mm. Uh, our uh, mm. our indulgence even in elections as it does in our uh, other work the social activity the public activity it's not that we become active and start visiting temples at the time of election it's not like that we are as i said we follow a routine 24 into 7 if you are going to temple you are going every day if you are working for election we are always working regardless yeah. of the election is happening or not so we are ready 
now of course the last word has to come from the election commission you want two elections uh, you know from jammu kashmir state now uh, w- what do you have to say to the huge crowds that were coming in for uh, rahul gandhi uh, in your state in in no uh, yeah in the Good jammu region you, you pointed out there were two elections and i i think just to Uh, at the risk of being boisterous, I would add the second election is the highest ever margin hmm. in the NK in any and in any Lok Sabha. And you defeated election. Gulam Nabi Azad, the stalwart. Uh, that was the first time. That was another big one. And the second time was Mr. Vikramaditya. Yeah. But the second election. So you have been dragon slayers in no, one not way. That. But uh, incidentally, that, that, I think uh, again the credit goes to Prime Minister Modi's, uh, you know, push to the development agenda, which we have also uh, sought. To, we have we have tried to successfully carry forward. Now my constituency is possibly the only constituency. Uh, of the looks of which got uh, not one not two but three central sponsored uh, medical colleges mm. two passport offices so like that i mean such a huge uh, path breaking developmental national level project the first ever river rejuvenation project on the lines of ganga happened in devika river so all that i think the credit would again go to the kind of patronage that we received from the present government Uh, without any kind of a discrimination which was possibly happening uh, at the regional level by the earlier governments but having said that um, you know as far as the crowd that you mentioned i don't think this is a crowd which actually carries any uh, it's like uh, it, it doesn't carry any moss any weightage for the simple reason if you if you identify the faces who are coming they're all disgruntled faces half of them didn't find a place in bjp half of them angry with um uh, uh, uh with the congress party half of them uh, retired officials mm. didn't find any rehabilitation so wherever he went they were joining us so it's not a very meaningful these were those star uh, people who were walking along with rahul gandhi but other than there were hardly any but aapke district se koi nahi gaya tha wahan pe no there is some disgruntled congressman or or but votes to hai na aapke paas yeah certainly but they not that suddenly they will vote for them mm. I'm sure you, it's good that you pointed out that many of them who complained were also not vote for Congress. Acha. It's just that they thought A N I is covering us, <laughs> so it's a good opportunity. Okay. And I can actually uh, name some of them, which I would not. Uh-huh. Some of them. No But faces. you tell me, uh, uh, it was quite surprising to see that Farooq Abdullah, Omar Abdullah, Mehbooba Mufti, they all joined the yatra. How come this yatra united people who never shared a platform for a long time? No, it's not that. I mean, uh, national conference is uh, known to strike alliances both ways. They have with, parted with, ways with, with in... BJP, with Congress also. They have been doing so. Hmm. So, so has think... Mehbooba. Yes. Yeah, so... But then uh, you saw the kind of warmth that uh, that the Abdullahs and Mehbooba no, displayed towards. That is towards... the and the and the spur of the moment, given the kind of context it happens. So I don't think a national conference going with the Congress party uh, for a yatra. means that they have struck a chord which is going to last long or other way around and if it is so then the congress party has to explain whether it uh, is in favor of 370 or against it because three congress party has so far very uh, managed a very inconvenient silence hmm. uh, even when this yatra was going on they never uh, didn't speak away, about uh, it hmm. whether they should they they would bring back 370 if given a choice or whether they support the abrogation whereas national congress is openly opposing it yeah so there are lot much of contradiction amongst themselves also but can so they I, go for an election in case of forming an alliance do you see at any point of time as a as a politician from the state do you see any alliances coming up while keeping this contentious issue on the side on the back no i think that, i think that will be that will be too early to actually uh, draw any surprises because that will happen Uh, once the results come out and whenever the election happens so i don't think but you can see some kind of a political activity increasing in uh, in kashmir uh, suddenly the press conferences have begun and uh, on 370 uh, bayan aane lag gaye hain no, i think that's also because uh, you see that again the credit goes to bjp <laughs> and the modi led government because the milieu wow. is now such you can have so much of political activity see for the first time the district council elections were held after 70 years i think that's also something to be answered why we could not have zila parishads in jammu and kashmir for several long decades when we had in every other state and this is these the parties which you are referring to they are the ones which were raising the bogey or the slogan of a autonomy b self rule now what is self rule to my understanding self rule is the rule of the self rule which emanates from the ground this has to be rule of the common okay, man okay that's a different interpretation so, so 
this is so then in that case if that is different then this interpretation would mean rule of mine my family <laughs> so self, so what i'm trying to say is so now the modi government has created a milieu where there is a, there is outlets available for expression of your democratic aspirations a b the security scenario has also undergone a change you don't lo no longer have stone pelting as you so often ha had earlier you don't have those robin hood type terrorists now if you hear a new name in the world of terrorism which you've been reporting about now and then hmm. in 3 days 4 days you find the eliminated gets eliminated or liquidated so that has created a a milieu where you could indulge in activity b where you could aspire for hmm. the democratic activity so i think the credit for this activity which you are saying on the rise i would instead of giving credit to the these opposition parties i would rather give credit to prime minister modi who has created such a milieu that they can come out so you know uh, if you are saying that there is so much of uh, positivity in the state in 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 jammu or in kashmir region if there is so much of positivity and peace which has come in elimination of terrorism that you're talking about why is it that the pandits are not able to return to their homes and relocate in the numbers that we expected it to happen no i think uh, the process is going on See, to begin with it just was 6000 jobs or whatever given and i believe only yesterday i was being told that more than half of them have already joined back of course unfortunately target killing happens which obviously had to create a, a fear psychosis which it did hmm. and uh, which you can't deny because hmm. the loss of uh, human life anywhere and from any section of society uh, can't be redeemed and there can't be any compensation for that so there had to be an initial uh, re reaction or response to that but now gradually they are feeling because they know at the end of the day that their fortunes are not more secure with any other dispensation other than one led by bjp or prime minister modi and this has been again proven by our track record but i was saying a few moments ago in the times of perception it's not simply perception it's been it's been walk the talk like you know in 1990 when that mass exodus happened we were not in in government in most of the states we were not in government at the center at that point in time also our leaders came forth to give them shelter to help them rehabilitate we uh, we also struggled and created a education avenues for them in yeah. the higher education colleges schools in maharashtra wherever for example if we had a friendly party there in power we managed to persuade them in madhya pradesh like that. so it was a, even at that time even when we did not have the strings of power with us so i think the the kashmiri pandit community also believes of course if if they are sometimes feeling little aggrieved they would obviously complain to us and they complain to us because they have expectation from us hmm. they don't complain to others because they have already tried them so that i agree that they the expectations are from your party and only your party nobody else uh, and that is why there is also this sense that ab nahi hoga to kab hoga absolutely absolutely this is a, and i think they are welcome to think like that and abhi hoga abhi hoga and in the past in the present the future is been bjp which will stand by them which has stood by them which is standing by them which will always stand by them hmm. but as i said now if if an incident happens which you know disturbs the entire milieu and which is obviously going to create a fear psychosis you cannot actually uh, that sometimes creates some kind of a ripple hmm. which uh, has been successfully got over now and gradually they are coming around so uh, non bjp parties are saying uh, parties kya there are only two now there in the state uh, they are saying that you're trying to impose in the state a reimagined past that you uh, especially you uh, talk about uh, talk about a past and talk about a future which is not which is not reality you want to bring in a new reality so how do you say what do you respond to somebody who says that ye this was not the reality ever in kashmir and this is not going to be the reality in future see if you uh, take it by the literal sense reality is reality it can't be new or old what is real what is there is real now what is new reality and what is old reality old reality is possibly the reality they are referring to which suits them the accession of the no, state no, I'm telling that's you. what I, they no, talk no, that, about that 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 you believe so maybe for them the reality is that for 30 years there was a wheel of fear 10% voter turnout they would get elected as legislators and mps form governments one after the other from generation to generation and that was a fine that's a comfortable reality for them 
because for three generations they could flourish in that reality so the change of that reality doesn't suit them the new reality is of course different new reality is the reality which is prevailing in the uh, rest of india and why not why not jammu kashmir as being a part of india even in those days whenever somebody said uh, kashmir issue i for one for almost three decades have been saying that there's no there was no issue as such as kashmir issue it was just manufactured because we kept debating about it but jammu kashmir was even then as much a part of uh, as state of india as any other state so new reality is something which doesn't suit them a secondly now that we have a democratic uh, grassroots set up over there we have people coming out i think there's nothing wrong if this is the reality which ha- should have happened the third now reality of kashmir as you mentioned certainly if that means what they refer to as kashmiriyat now can you ever justify kashmiriyat in the absence of a kashmiri pandit because kashmir from that point of view would be uh, representing a composite culture where you have a mix of both the religions both the traditions the sufism but with the kashmiri pandit having been thrown out for the last three decades the two generations of muslims having grown up in in a different kind of an atmosphere where does that culture exist so in fact now with the return of kashmiri pandits with the return of the democratic order with the with the with the expression of democratic aspiration from the ground i would rather say that this is actually the reality which for which jammu kashmir sought to become a part of indian union and and maharaja hari singh did then maharaja signed uh, the instrument of accession to be a part of india so uh, forgive me for saying this but every time i speak to people from the state i mean this the term kashmiriyat you speak about kashmiriyat to anybody outside of jammu kashmir the only thing they know and i'm telling you you know the youth those who have only seen bloodshed they saying yahi kashmiriyat hai the only kashmiriyat that rest of india has seen is just bloodshed yes. so when you hear politicians talk about the good old era of uh, you know of kashmiriyat where they talk about uh, being a disputed state and all it angers indians let me tell you this people say ki bahut ho gaya ये सुन सुन के थक गए हैं अबाउट कश्मीरियत द सेम एज पंजाबियत कि ये गन कल्चर इज व्हाट यू रिमेंबर दैट्स अ रीजन टू दैट बिकॉज एंटायर जनरेशन रादर जनरेशन एंड हाफ हैज ग्रोन अप अंडर गन कल्चर ओवर द लास्ट थ्री एंड हाफ डेकेड सो ऑब्वियसली दे हैव नो अदर लेगेसी नो अदर मेमोरी दोज हु आर इन देयर टीन्स नाउ और इवन देयर सी दोज हु माइग्रेटेड आउट एज यूथ आर नाउ एल्डर सिटीजन्स many of them around many of them not those who are elder than are no longer around so what the present generation so all the more reason that the same culture and the same social milieu needs to be restored and if it is happening in a gradual way i don't find anything wrong in that so sure. uh, happening uh, in a gradual way is what irritates most of india no, ki ab no. gradual se thak nahi thak gaye yes sun, sun, okay. so that is the question that the congress party has to answer why this temporary provision which they themselves said the biggest greatest protagonist of temporary provision was the congress party in fact during the uh, one of the uh, debates in the constituent assembly when dr sawa prasad mukherjee suggested that there could be a rethinking about including article 370 it was none less than the then prime minister uh, then then uh, uh, prime minister nehru he was already prime minister as part of the interim government who suggested that dr mukherjee don't get worried ye ghiste ghiste ghis jayegi and not only that it was put in writing in the bracket temporary provision now ask congress is the question that you are asking me should be asked to the successive congress governments why they dragged on this temporary provision for seven decades because now i'll tell you why because they also at that point in time knew that if it was temporary it has to be temporary but over a period of time this temporary provision became a vested interest for them hmm. they thought carrying on with this perception of uh, making jammu kashmir appear as separate from rest of india so called special status so called would actually was actually helping them they were operating in a limited space with a limited vote bank can you imagine uh, the 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 uh, pakistani refugees they did not have their voting rights for 70 years till prime minister modi came in whereas two from the same gender went on to become prime ministers of india dr marmon singh shrinder kumar gujral I sometimes uh, shudder to think what would have been their fate if they had gone and settled in Jammu and Kashmir. Yeah. The destiny would have deprived them of the privilege they of becoming prime minister. They would have got no status, no, no citizenship. No, no, not only that. Yeah. They would have been denied 
the destined privilege of becoming prime ministers yeah they would have never they would have lost that the yeah. what what was written in their horoscope if only they had made the mistake of going and settling down in jammu kashmir because you see this was all part of punjab hmm. ferozpur and uh, uh, amritsar and then pathan court yeah. gurdaspur was the district yeah. through which the uh, this line was drawn Uh, uh, when the partition happened, so many of them went this side. When those who went that side were deprived of their. So I think now that if what now were the do, seats in parliament? Now what do, were the seats now, in the assembly? Now those who say now those now those who say that we want to have that and we are tired. That's because they are comfortable with that kind of a, a separatist perception. Uh, while being in mainstream, they 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 try to function as so-called mainstream political party, but. certainly deprive de, de, uh, drive the benefits of a separatist perception so that is what suits them. that's why i said the new reality is the reality which should have happened in jammu kashmir in uh, i'm going to come to the new reality but old reality and new reality i don't know whether you heard um, uh, the former uh, uh, advisor to vajpayee ji uh, mr dulath had said that at one point of time the nsa um, when he wasn't nsa uh, mr dovel had told him that aap advani ji se baat kar lijiye aur jammu kashmir ki problems resolve ho jayegi if you just speak and he said i was on the other side of the divide which meant that there was a divide in the bjp government at that time at that time that other side of the divide matlab ye pmo mein the aur wo uh, advani ji ke sath kaam kar rahe the so there was a divide and he was advisor to the prime minister on jammu kashmir but that was not important enough but the divide in the bjp at that time was important no. today where are we no no I'll, let me first is follow the do uh, have we any reason to take what mr dulat says as a gospel truth a b i think it's hardly worth discussing many of these uh, former diplomats and bureaucrats are when they have nothing else left no stake left they resort to writing books which can create outrageous uh, uh, you know uh, some kind of an opinions and give some kind of uh, and attention both to them as well as the the books that they sometimes write and i having been uh, dealing with the civil services i have also formed an opinion that still 60 there is a retirement age 60 to 65 is a window when they look for getting membership in some commission some board after 65 when there is no strength left then they become nationalists they become realists then they start nating all these studies so is it now can you is this the propriety of a former such, such a chief. chief to make such kind of statements if at all it happened that itself means that he was not equal to the job that he was holding at that point in time so i think it hardly needs to be discussed we 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 don't need to get into uh, discussing what is being said by mr dulat and not we have any reason to believe or disbelieve it okay uh, so let me come to the present then because uh, you know just this week uh, both omar abdullah and mehbooba mufti while you might feel that they are inconsequential but they are in the sense that they are leading the narrative as far as the opposition is concerned in the state now they are both saying that there is a there is fear among people kyunki bulldozer chalne lag gaye hain and uh, even in important places important in the sense which was considered important in shrinagar that bulldozers are going and poor people's homes are going to be destroyed without them getting notice about it no i think this issue has been uh, under discussion in the last few days but i believe the lieutenant governor has uh, uh, sought to convey to them and also assure them that it is only those who have encroached with the misuse of authority or power who are going to face this and not a commoner who is there otherwise so i think uh, uh, maybe if they have encroached upon illegally or illegitimately they have something to fear but uh, uh, let's trust what the lieutenant governor says that uh, those who have uh, not misused their position for this Uh, would not be brought to harm uh, so uh, mehbooba mufti has said uh, and i'm going to quote her she says earlier we used to think that bjp has taken a cue from what israel was doing in palestine but now they have turned it worse than palestine they want to make jnk like afghanistan she's talking about uh, without asking or without going by rule of law uh, it's like the bjp is doing exactly what they want via the administration no i don't think that even doesn't even deserve a response i mean these are off hand uh, hand statements made without substantiating and we live in a era of evidence hmm. like so, she saying her daughter's 
passport is also not uh, coming through no no there so many other things now for the first time the the uh, some decisive act- action has uh, been initiated in the valley against both the terrorists as well as the perpetrators of terrorism what we were talking just a few moments ago that a terrorist doesn't survive more than 3 days is just because of that we just there's no longer uh, any kind of support or a, or 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 a direct or an indirect patronage being offered by these so called mainstream parties which are actually protecting them and patronizing them so i think that is uh, what is making uh, them pinch Hmm. So I also I, is it possible that you know like for example there was just uh, I think this week itself was Kashmir Solidarity Day uh, you know Pakistan observes that but it was very muted uh, is it because many of the separatists in in Jammu Kashmir now get no support either financially or militarily or uh, you know in any other yes, manner yes those channels have been blocked because the so called these mainstream political parties when they were in power were possibly not sincere to the extent they were expected to be or they were acting to the extent they were expected to be and secondly if you go by this palestine and afghanistan and what what blah blah you would rather i would appreciate some day you would uh, create a, some kind of a feature on the pak occupied jammu kashmir and see the comparison there they are actually vying struggling yearning praying wishing that they should be, be made a part of india so more than india claiming the pak occupied jammu kashmir as a part of india it is there people living over there who are clamoring for this because the kind of you know unfair treatment and uh, the inhuman conditions they have been made to live in so uh, for the benefit of our audience i have done a lot of reporting but for our benefit of audience could you just explain a little bit about uh, about pak occupied kashmir and about kashmir and the difference between the two and what is how uh, uh, what what happened and where is what is india's position on this in a in a crisp manner <laughs> no i actually uh, see this uh, was there were a series of uh, uh, just when the yatra uh, entered into jammu and kashmir there was a write up by me which was published in a number of newspapers also by nakul i said congress actually missed the opportunity in kashmir which cannot be redeemed by these yatras so yatra would be rather one more addition to the misdoings mm. so this kind of experimentation which the successive governments kept doing with regard to jammu and kashmir i think the first to my mind if you was because uh, i have been you know de- de- dealing with the subject and also researching yeah. studying it over the several decades the 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 first step towards you know um, uh, this uh, uh, wrong doing happened with the with the princely state of jammu and kashmir not being allowed to be handled by the home ministry the then home ministry so the manner in which sardar patel was handling all the other 560 uh, princely states uh, was not something which actually fed into his domain because the prime minister himself uh, because pandit ji thought that he knew jammu kashmir better than others he was from the state for yes, for our for uh, very, maybe and viewers and listeners abroad who are not aware of the complexities of it yeah uh, he was uh, the prime course. minister first prime minister of india was from jammu and kashmir yes, he was a kashmiri pandit yeah but elected from uh, uttar uh, yeah, pradesh yeah, state yeah elected from up because the family had got their settled down there so he thought it is better uh, so in in a way you know then so he also dealt personal preferences there preference for sheikh abdullah and then the kind of perception uh, that the you know the prince here maharaja hari singh was not in keep, keeping with the compatibility because there was a lot of mistrust between the prime minister and maharaja hari singh and uh, then there was d- delay in you know accession uh, also because uh, uh, the then prime minister nehru was keen that sheikh abdullah should be first handed over the power which was quite unfair you so know this it was family not, politics it was not it on. was not required because mm. the instrument of accession which had been uh, drafted by lord mountbatten simply asked for which preference mm. uh, pakistan india so only two and maharaja hari singh was clearly in favor of uh, india but son somehow the prime minister himself said that some day we might have a referendum which was not required so it was a absolutely uncalled for statement by prime minister we then stuck yeah we stuck to the prime minister's office of that time stuck to the government and then 
there were clauses to that uh, yeah, referendum yeah, yeah, statement yes. but pakistan yes, kind of yes, their of course, narrative of course, came naturally up. naturally you're yeah. right then it was used in different ways it could yeah. not have been uh, it could have been avoided you know everything yeah. is uh, not e- always taken in the same vein as it is said then going to uno again uh at the behest of prime minister was not right in the sense that again it's created a narrative as you are saying which suited others hmm. because and because uh, no other in case of no other princely state we did we go yeah. not even in case of hyderabad we didn't we, yes. where you had a police action uh by the home ministry so thirdly then war began when the war began uh the pakistan kabailis or their sponsored warriors had already entered into we are talking about 47 uh, now yeah some mm-hmm. territory yeah, october and uh, october over they already entered into some part of jammu and kashmir uh, which were they were uh, you know trying to capture it but then when the indian army landed there they started throwing them out yeah and uh, they had to a great extent succeeded when again prime minister unilaterally declared a cease fire mm-hmm. i mean had he not done so uh, and delayed it for another 2 3 days Uh, maybe we didn't we would not have this park of education you were Jamaican. you were not Because born in that but your family must have so, known about yeah. this so then that that, that part of territory which was mm-hmm. lost because instantly the mm-hmm. suddenly the ceasefire happened so that part went to their occupation yeah. if it had not been announced and uh, ironically uh, uh, prime minister nehru did not consult many uh, on that i mean he just made a radio broadcast and so all these things happening and then successive governments mm. mrs gandhi came in 1975 bringing back sheikh abdullah yeah uh, which was again had a very divided opinion across the country whether to have it or not but then possibly mrs gandhi thought that uh, uh, this uh, regime would not last long and she had the uh, smartness to handle it but you know um, uh, uh, the imponderables happen in history <laughs> mrs uh, Uh, Sheikh Abdullah died in 1983, and Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated in 1984. 84, yes. Just a few months later, yes, or a, hardly a year later. Yeah. So that the, the, and then the subsequent uh, regimes and botched up elections yes, after that. Yes, and subsequent regimes. Yes, and 1987 yeah. uh, rigged election. So then it became a vested interest to keep the pot boiling. So all these things uh, happening in a manner, and then West Pakistan, or, or which of course was then West Pakistan, now it's Pakistan refugees, uh, uh, many of whom here like I K Gujral, Manmohan Singh, uh, Inder Kumar Malhotra, Gal- uh, Gujral, uh, Gujral, uh, and uh, our Madan Lal Khurana, all these people who made a mark for them. So even journalism, yeah. Mr. Kuldeep Nair, and all these people, they went there, and uh, you know they were deprived of their rights. So uh, just because. there was again a vested interest not to allow them to vote because the these parties were not confident whether they would be able to secure their so all these uh, uh, these the, what began mismanagement and mess wa- over the know, years i think right? what began as a mismanagement and wrongful experimentation ended up in a vested interest hmm to continue it in the manner it was going because it's then began to serve the purpose of a handful of uh, people a handful of families Okay so now let me before I know you have to go back to parliament so let me quickly bring two issues which uh, before we wind up one is uh, your current assignments uh, you have like this plethora of portfolios so give me a little background about that what is it that are your goals and uh, how much have you achieved in the past uh, since you got those portfolios and by 2024 what are your goals no i think uh, of the many departments that i have associated with one of course is the governance the department of personnel and that is uh, the hallmark of uh, prime minister modi's uh, work style uh, he had brought in a number of reforms uh, while as chief minister and even now and uh, i think the paradox is that instead of bringing in new rules this government is known to do away with the earlier rules so we have already done away with as many as uh, 1600 odd rules mm. which had lost relevance with the 1600 rules yes done away with okay you know each government each uh, officer post retirement each uh, democratic elected government after having completed terms takes pride in narrating stories to other look here in my time ye kanun aaya ye here is a government which would have to say humne ye itne hataye mm. and uh, you will be amused 
within three months of this government having come in, we, uh, we were sworn in on the 26th of May 2014. In September or October, we did away with that dubious rule which was a legacy of the British Empire of getting the certificates attested by attested. the gazetted officers. officers. So, and, and, and I think we, we sent out a message that look here, now this is a new government headed by Prime Minister Modi which has the capacity to trust the youth of this country. And I sometimes wonder this rule should have been done away right at the midnight of freedom. Why, why wasn't it? Hmm. Because this was a rule because the, the British uh, hmm. treated us as their... The character so, certificate yeah, that you they got. They treated us as their subjects, hmm. as a colony subject. So, and then of course for level playing field, the the interview, practice of conducting interviews lower posts for was lower done posts, away with. Yes. So many uh, rules English, which are... English uh, test or something was or the other one. Yes, one. yes, yes, we yeah. did. Now, e even uh, in the uh, Staff Selection Commission, we are going to have um, uh, 12 languages to begin with. I hope we'll go to 22, all these mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. Earlier on, it was only English and the... So we try to create a level playing field for every mm. youth, regardless of his uh, background, his socio-economic strata. Many of the reforms which have been, many of the rules which have been done away with, not often talked about because they don't make news. For example, but yeah, from uh, but jinko follow karna uh, padta yes, hai. but from the yeah. so point of view of uh, the social angle is very important. Like for example, there was a pension rule that a separated daughter cannot claim the uh, family pension of her uh, diseased. Uh, parent uh, unless she produces a court judgment of having secured a divorce we did away with that and uh, as an evidence only if she has filed a petition the receipt mm -hmm. of having filed the petition is good enough mm -hmm. similarly there was uh, another pension rule that unless a government employee uh, completes at least 10 years of service and if he dies in harness even before 10 years his family can't claim mm -hmm. pension so I said what is it I mean you didn't ask him that he should hold on for 10 years hmm. to allow his family. So if you didn't give him the choice of choosing the timing of his death, how can you deprive him? So we did away with that. There so, are still so, some rules like you have to provide proof of life. Yes, absolutely, which was very <laughs> inhuman. And so what we did, when we, when we you know, sought to undo it, to my mind was to do away with it altogether. But then hmm. some of the bankers came to me and they said there have been instances where there's been misused. Okay. You know, some characters use the... Uh, signed checkbooks of their parents and got away. So you have all kinds of people in this society. So then I thought, okay, let, let's use technology. So we started digital certificate, okay. uh, which means you use biometry uh, from home, uh, even on your mobile. And now that the lifespan of an average Indian is on the increase, we have more number of pensioners in India today than the number of working employees, yeah. which was the other way around at the time of day. So, and the people are living uh, beyond 80, beyond 90. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sizable population of pensioners who is above 90. Okay. So after 70 or 80, even the finger marks start, start undergoing change. Yes. So I think we were the first in the government to have introduced a face recognition technology. Okay, so iris, through iris, sir. It, uh, face, no, face. face. You just, the, the, the gentleman or the gentle lady just looks into the mobile okay. camera and, and uh, the photograph is taken. Uh, it, it gets connected with the Aadhaar number hmm. uh, for verification and then... Uh, gets immediately transmitted to the concern bank. And all this happened just in 60 seconds. Okay. So, this is like the Digi yeah, Yatra. So, and I all think that. one of the hallmarks yeah. of Prime Minister Modi's rule has been that technology has been used very optimally, which is ease happening. of living. Ease of living, <coughs> ease of governance. And I think one of the good outcomes of that was that when pandemic struck all of a sudden, nobody was prepared. Right? The working in the government of India offices did not get interrupted at all. In fact, uh, sometimes we were working more. Hmm. So one of the junior officers told me the, the new mantra should be minimum attendance, maximum output. Because output. many people were working from home and working even on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. So, <laughs> ye earth sciences kya cheez hai which you, uh, which is coming under <coughs> these new fangled names yeah, yeah. which confuse people. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad you asked it because this is something very close to my heart and I think I, uh, we must thank Prime Minister Modi. He spoke about it twice hmm. in his Independence Day address about the deep sea mission which is uh, being spearheaded by mm. this ministry in 2021, mm. Independence Day in 2022. Whereas I was other way, in a lighter way in telling uh, uh, my officers in that ministry, I said, there was a time if you did a survey and asked people in Delhi, where on earth is the uh, office of the Ministry of Earth Sciences? Yeah. Nobody would be Nobody able to tell. Know. But suddenly this is gained currency. Uh, 
because i believe that when prime minister talks of amrit kal the next 25 years which are going to raise india to an to a different level mm. <coughs> I think the entire value addition is going to come from the sources which have remained unexplored, and one of them is the ocean resources. We never realized that the earlier governments didn't pay any heed to this fact that we have the longest possible coastal area. Coastline. We have about seventy-five hundred yeah. kilometer. Hmm. And I was telling the friends from uh, Australia the other day. I said, "You come from a country which is Australia, an island which is Australia, continent which is Australia, but your ocean is not Australian ocean." We have, is, we have an Indian ocean. We have an Indian ocean, and then I said because my ancestors were smart enough to realize there's a huge amount of wealth lying inside, and I I can foresee in the next five seven years all these minerals, biodiversity, hmm. uh, living and non-living, you know, resources, richness inside the Indian seabeds is going to add value to Indian economy because the, all the other resources would have been, and the second would be of the Himalayan. the sort the aroma which we have already started aroma mission and purple revolution so this deep sea mission uh, is what the earth science is carrying forward we have already launched samundrayaan from chennai which is exploring the sea properties and i think in next 2 3 years almost uh, same uh, soon after the gaganyaan goes up a uh, 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 human indian into the space and an indian into the sea Hmm. we are planning uh, we have about 5000 meter sea bed the okay. deepest so we so we we plan to have Underwater. one okay. uh, human being going down visually uh, you know doing a reiki there okay. to discover what all is there so this is going to be a huge resource of economy in the times to uh, come right so earlier in the uh, when we started st- uh, Uh, speaking you were talking about uh, you know setting up universities and things in jammu uh, not many people would know that when you st- went to study medicine you went all the way uh, to tamil nadu uh, to uh, study medicine i mean a lot of people from your state have been doing that uh, because of the lack of opportunities uh, and now they wouldn't need to do yeah, that yeah i think right? there were other reasons also because in my time and my generation we didn't have the concept of private medical colleges hmm. and the government sector Uh, of course, you are right. There are far and few. In fact, uh, uh, at the time of independence, there was only one college, degree college, entire North India. There was Lahore, government mm. college Lahore. So, uh, the children of well-to-do families would go there. That's the reason when Vajpayee ji took uh, the bus there, bus. he carried Devanand. Yeah. Well, Mr. Devanand also was an alumni of that. So, otherwise, there was no accessibility. Mr. Devanand was B.A. honors in English. Okay. so mr khushwan singh from there mr balrai sani from there hmm. so only one degree college in entire north india and uh, one medical college which is hmm. even today king edward hmm. uh, lahore yeah. so after that you know we had yeah. medical college amritsar then much later uh, srinagar hmm. so after partition you are right a there were not hmm. much of this thing and the quality education institutions were there in the south because uh, uh, the british came this way from east So East India Company first landed in Calcutta. So first university Calcutta, first presidency college yeah. Calcutta. Then they came southwards. Madras presidency. Madras, Madras, Madras University. Yeah. And that time the college where I went, Stanley Medical yeah. College, was a part of Madras University. So mm. it was supposed to be you know of the world standards. Yeah. So that was also for But the reason of course. Medical. Why did you move to politics? What happened? No, actually I have been a, a medical professional once. A, a medical professional is once a doctor is always a doctor. I have been <laughs> a teacher of medicine for almost twenty five years. Yeah. Before I. Uh, put in my papers because the party asked me to take up an assignment. Everybody thought I have gone off my head <laughs> doing this because I was a professor there. But you worked for diabetes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In, please tell us idea. about that. Yes, tell yeah. us about that. About because you know it's such a it's a epidemic of sorts. You yeah. know, in in our country. Please tell no, us. No, that's about also that. because uh, you see, two, uh, on, at two or three levels, the change has happened. A that earlier on the diabetes uh, type two diabetes mellitus, which is commonly known, was known to be a disease more of South India. Hmm. That's why we had the first ever. Department of Diabetology in Madras Medical College, somewhere in 1980 or so. Uh, and in north, they were hardly, uh, you know, if, if particularly when you went upward to the North Punjab and to Kashmir, people would not have heard of diabetes. Now it's become a pan India, hmm. uh, you know, kind of a pandemic. Hmm. And uh, we have the, we are virt- virtually the world capital of diabetes. Also because the common lifestyles uh, and the sedentary, phys- right, sedentary right. habits also, no the exercise, stress levels have stress. gone up tremendously. Uh, now you were talking of Kashmiri Pandits. I did a uh, paper long back, about 20 years back, which was heard by the WHO. They published uh, the stress diabetes because earlier uh, we came across families which uh, 
PTSD. We didn't have a family history otherwise. Mm. And and there, there was no consanguinity among the couple, which sometimes happens in South India. The husband and wife were not related also by any blood connection. But still, simultaneously, almost they were developing type 2. So there some stress factors and environment factors are weighing very heavily. It wasn't the diet, uh, Yes, of course, diet also. Rice and uh, red meat? No, I think also because we are having a diet which is uh, not, we are still evolving. As, a, as an evolving society, even our diet is evolving. Hmm. We are neither here nor there. We are having pizza also and batura also. Hmm. We are having samosa also and noodle also. Hmm. So, and then in diet also, there are three components, the quality, quantity, and hmm. uh, the distribution. Often the dietitians and uh, counselors, they stress on the quality, quantity, not on the distribution point of it. And uh, the common uh, dictum uh, in our society is that it's the best. So uh, it's the other way around. Yeah. yeah because the morning uh, meal is breakfast. But everybody says breakfast is the most important yes, meal. Yes, yes, absolutely. Whereas. Toost, it, toost it, ke it, khao. It, <laughs> absolutely, you're right. So it is break the fast. So break the fast with just about 20 to 25 percent of the total calorie intake of 24 hours. Yeah. And then heavier meal is your lunch with a mid morning mm -hmm. snack. And the dinner is a little early, which is uh, correspond, uh, corresponds to your supper huh. and a bedtime snack. So we don't follow all these patterns. We don't, yes. So that coupled with stress. So now... You did you... all this uh, in your study. You yeah, yeah, I've done all this. this. I was practicing actually. But why did you leave Why did you leave that for politics? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'll go back any moment when <laughs> I'm not needed here. When did, where that when did you decide there. that, okay, so, not medicine and uh, public service? No, no, it's not that. Uh, I didn't decide. Oh. You would not believe, I was practicing till 25th of May 2014, the oh. day before I was sworn in. Okay. So, I came to, uh, I called up the BJP Karyale and I said that uh, uh, Modi ji is to be sworn in as Prime Minister. And usually the program used to happen in the Rashtrapati Bhavan with the limited VVIPs. Hmm. So, I said we may not be expected. So, we have to come because you see, once you are in a practice, you know, like lawyers also, hmm. you don't like to leave your chamber yeah. for too long a period of time or interval. So, then I was told, no, no, you come here to all the MPs, because I think that Modi ji will take so much interest and rightly so, so we will probably do it in the open lawns. And you would recall the first time there, yes. it happened uh, you know, yes. outside in the open lawns. Yeah. And, uh, because, and that was the most watched oath ceremony of any head yeah. of state. Yeah. So then the same morning, I, I I wasn't even carrying my clothes. I just came with a briefcase. I thought I'll attend the oath ceremony and, go back. and take the earliest uh, train or flight back home to huh. catch up with my work. And I had about three weeks of uh, consultation in waiting. Oh. In my chair. So, but uh, suddenly in the morning, I received a call um, uh, on the 26th that hmm. I had to go to Gujarat Bhavan. Hmm. So, I thought uh, this was my mistake, was maybe my namesake, some other <laughs> person was me. Then I was, no, no, it was you only who had been called. So, then I stayed yes, back I and I think it's a great privilege because uh, uh, to be figured out to, for a cause. Uh, Do you think for, medical profession ka hi extension hai public service? And absolutely, because if you are a good practitioner, you are by temperament bound to, you can't succeed as a good practitioner. We have seen the best of the brains in medical profession. I have dealt with three generations of them, both as a practitioner, as a teacher, as a student. We have some of the very, uh, very learned medical professionals who could not be successful as practitioners mm. because uh, that de dealing with the patient requires a different kind of connect, communication But you're a real politician in the sense of fighting election and... <laughs> Moving among I the people. I think that also helped me because uh, this okay. was a, when I came in, this seat had been uh, lost to the party twice mm -hmm. consecutively. And I think I, I I had the added advantage of being a practitioner because virtually every household, I had one or the other patient. <laughs> the kind of disease I deal with. Okay. In, in conclusion, I have to ask you this question, you know, uh, everybody that we've had out here talk about how polarized uh, it's got since Modi ji came to power because everybody is either very pro Modi ji or very anti Modi ji. There's no mid 
path everybody and this one sees even in families tell me your brother was in the nc now of course he's left the nc he's joined you but aapki family mein bhi aise hi hua na one brother in bjp and one brother in the nc well, i think how that, did that, that work that itself is 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 a, is is an answer to what you said because if he has joined bjp that hmm. means he has realized the folly of being where he was <laughs> and 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 rightly so there is nobody against modi i tell you i just give you an example when we were campaigning in up in lucknow university there was kind of a stir among some women uh, students that uh, you know they were not comfortable because of all these reasons which you are saying because these are reasons which are discussed in so called intellectual circles so they take fancy in discussing among students so some of the students had this position you know this will be you know some kind of a saffron so called regime mm. and all those things so then one day we 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 used to sit with them in groups so mm. i asked uh, some of we asked them okay we leave it to you we are not here to you just think with a cool mind or take your time and then come back to us to tell us not uh, not to please us so that we can carry your opinion to others also what would you think in the given scenario would be the preferred choice hmm. and we sat with them for a couple of you know day you know the same group after a day or so when we said they said nahi फिर तो ये मोदी जी वाला ही ठीक है सो आई आज आई सेड नो द अदर डे यू आर मेकिंग ऑल दोज इंटेलेक्चुअल यू नो पॉस्टुलेशन एंड नो वॉट हैपन एंड यू नो वॉट वॉज द आंसर यंग गर्ल स्वीट लुकिंग गर्ल सेड कि कम से कम मम्मा अब स्कूटी पे तो जाने देती है पहले पाँच बजे के बाद कहती थी अकेले बाहर नहीं जाना सो वॉज दिस इन विच स्टेट लखनऊ आई एम टॉक यू पी यू पी you see different religion hmm. may not be conventional pro bjp family hmm. but this is exactly what this girl said hmm. and that is the tell tale story she was talking of all kind of postulation huh. when they're finding it nahi yahi theek hai kam se kam because it is the comfort the ease of living which has been sought to be brought by prime minister modi and his government regardless of religion we didn't reach out only to those who had voted for us hmm. so this was coming from somebody because there is at least and this is precisely said pehle to mama kehti thi 5 baje ke baad ghar se bahar nahi jana hmm. so how much of curtailment of freedom and thereby also curtailment of their normal activity happened so when you uh, meet with your uh, constituents is this the feedback that you get even in your constituency where people are saying that you know after two terms of a government to go in for a for an election where you are asking for the third term it's not an easy task Absolutely, it's going it's to be easy. it's yeah it, maybe they believe you but then out of sheer boredom ki chalo kisi aur ko try kar lete hain that also happens you know for a third term no i think uh, yes i agree with you a of course instead of uh, incumbency there is pro incumbency hmm. and uh, it's not easy not easy at all not easy at all. i think You see, you would realize. Of course, we talk of Prime Minister Modi. Modi at twenty years means Chief Minister. This is about twenty-two years. At the same time, he's also the one of the longest-serving heads of uh, hmm. government across the world. Yeah. You've seen so many presidents changing in White House, so many prime ministers changing in Ten Downing. So that is because even for himself, his own performance, he has been raising the bar. Hmm. You know, he's he's put in too much of uh, hard work. consistent hard work with consistent focus always you know uh, dwelling on new ideas uh, having seen him work so closely for the last uh, so many years being in his office mm. so he he is raising the bar for himself he's never he, he never gets easily satisfied and that is the also and he's a, he, he's he's always studying always updating himself so if you go to him with a presentation uh, with the best of preparation you would have made i'm sure you he'll give you two more suggestions so that's because he raises the bar for himself that's why the people also instead of that in anti incumbency they feel no there is something more to look up to him okay if if in the last 5 years term modi ji gave us this in the next 5 year he is bound to give us something more and which we seen happening hmm. you know if the earlier 5 years were shochalyas other things the next 5 years was 370 other thing so there's always he's always moving beyond which is what when you talk to kashmiri pandits this is what they say that they are frustrated that certain things some of them are frustrated that some things are just taking too much time but they also feel that if it is not done by these guys then nobody else will absolutely, do it absolutely. so the expectation from you is tremendous and uh, to be delivered now 
that is what the absolutely, thing is. absolutely no, no those who have been those who have gone through this nightmare would always yeah. be you know impatient to get out of it so one can't grudge them you know the bjp is talking about this whole conspiracy uh, which involves international media also uh, it began uh, ev- before every election it happens they they cite pegasus uh, and they say that this whole adani thing is also exactly that uh, aimed at the nine elections uh, state elections and at 2024 do you think there is an international conspiracy against uh, the bjp and against Modi ji. So no, I think uh, the manner in which India is on the rise would not be easily taken by many uh, other countries of the world. And uh, India is now becoming the uh, most preferred destination uh, for business, most preferred uh, destination to deal with uh, for investment. Uh, and definitely the, uh, those who have uh, ruled the roost over the years uh, will not like India uh, to be on the ascent and that to that fast. but that is precisely that we will also have to deal with and i'm sure under prime minister modi we are capable enough to deal with all those uh, uh, contradictions right thank you thank so you, much for coming on the podcast thank you very, thank much, you very much. much i enjoyed it thanks thank you for watching or listening in to ani podcast with smita prakash do write in to tell us who you would like me to speak to in the next episode please like and subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this or heard this namaste jai hind